If you're a beekeeper, you need to provide a source of water for your bees to drink from so that they re can regulate the temperature of their hive. Now, I'm no bee, but I would not want to drink this water. I put some wood in there for the bees to land on so that they can float while they're drinking, but I'm wondering if there's a better solution for something for them to land on that, that won't turn the water gross after a couple of days. So instead of using something that's just laying around, I'm going to get a little fancy here and 3D print something for the bees. And for those purposes, I like to go to a website like Thingiverse, which is searchable and has a lot of free geometry. So here I'll search for raft, a very simple term for what I want. Hit enter. Some results are relevant, some are completely irrelevant, but there are a few rafts, uh, some that look like a motorized raft, or an adventure raft, but I'm just gonna go for something simple here. So a simple log raft is exactly what I'm gonna be looking for. So here um, is a page where you can download your raft and I'll include this link down in the description for anybody who wants to print this as well, but it's just a simple log lashed raft and I'll hit download and I'll unzip the file and it opens up. It has some information for attributing the file and licensing information. But uh, of course, the most important part is the actual geometry, which is an STL file, uh, stands for stereo lithography. It's an old file format. What you need to do next is what's called slicing the geometry, which is translating computer geometry into machine code that the 3D printer understands for building the geometry layer by layer. So you just take your file, you drag it into your program. Here I'm using the program Slicer. So it plops the geometry onto the print bed. And here one issue is, is that you need a flat part on the bottom of the print bed because it needs to print from a flat part going upwards. So that's easy to fix. You just uh, click on the file you select uh, the rotate option and there's three axes to the print bed to X, Y, and Z will rotate around the X axis and we choose a 90 degree rotation and there we go. Now it's uh, rotated so that uh, it's building up from a flat part of the geometry like you can see here. So that's perfect. So another issue here is it's a tall skinny thing and that's easy for the print head to knock off the print bed. So we have to add something called a brim which basically gives a little um, a extra bit of printing on the first layer for the for the print to catch on to so it has some extra adhesion to the print bed. So what we do next is we slice it and we preview the slice. So this is what it would actually, this is like a representation of the actual path the print head takes when it's when it's printing. And one interesting thing about prints that are 3D printed is if you go inside of it, you can see it, they're actually mostly hollow. In this case, uh, it's about 80% hollow. That's, that's an advantage to 3D printing. It makes light parts. Um, you don't need to make it 100% dense. That's actually not too beneficial. Um, so uh, something 20% actually gives a, a reasonable uh, strength to weight ratio for a 3D print. So. Um, Next, what we do is we export the print into a file. Uh, I, just to note that it's a, the type of material, PETG, what it is, a raft, what the layer height is, 200 microns, and then uh, I save it. And this file will take about five and a half hours to print. So um, not too big of a deal. You just hit go on the printer and just let it go. So I always put that in my file name as well, five hours, 30 minutes, just so. I can keep track when I'm actually um, browsing files in my printer. For those of you who haven't seen a 3D printer before, know how it works. It uses a spool of filament, in this case one and three quarter millimeter uh, PETG, which is basically water bottle plastic. Brings it into a gear driven uh, filament tube and drives it through a nozzle that is heated to 240 degrees Celsius. And it is printed layer by layer on a flatbed 
heated in this case to about 85 degrees Celsius. I printed three of these rafts. This one actually has kind of a nice amount of detail. If it was actually brown, it would look like a really real wooden raft. We'll have to consider that in the future, but I only had this orange color, translucent color right now. So, um, if I have three, I can print more. Refill this water. So I think it just floats enough to be pretty close to the water level. I don't know how much a bunch of bees weigh, but I think it can reasonably float, but we can definitely monitor that as time goes on. Thanks for watching.